Have you ever seen a producer get a great vocal sound fast, even in just a couple minutes, by pulling up a few plugins, dialing in some settings, and all of a sudden, you've got a studio sounding vocal? Well, friend, that's what I wanna show you how to do in this short video. These are the three steps that anyone can do to get a great sounding vocal mix. You don't need special plugins. The ones in your DAW will work just fine if you learn these three steps that will make getting a great vocal mix easy, and accessible to you anytime, whether you're on your laptop with headphones or behind some monitors in a nice studio. And I highly encourage you to stay until the end because it's step number three that is that last magic step that takes us from a good sounding vocal to a pro sounding vocal. Plus, I have a special gift for you at the end. So let's get started and dive in. Here's the completely raw vocal take that we have. Waiting on a Sunday afternoon for what I've read between the lines. Totally raw, fresh out of the mic. Now here is step number one for our vocal mix. We're gonna start with EQ. Now I already did some EQ here, but I'm gonna clear this so we can do it together and you can see exactly what we're doing. First step with EQ is typically you'll want to roll off the lows and this will help get rid of any rumble or low vocal noise. For a male vocal, I'll typically go around 85 to 100 hertz and for a female vocal, all the way up to 125. So we're gonna do a low cut that looks like this. Before, waiting, and with the plugin on, waiting. Okay, next step I wanna do is just brighten the tops of the vocal a little bit. We're gonna do this by adding a high shelf. Every single EQ has a high shelf and we're gonna just boost up maybe one and a half, maybe two dB, just somewhere around here at 8K. We'll listen and do it together. Waiting on a Sunday afternoon for what I've read between the lines. And so what that'll do is just make the, the highs of the vocal a little brighter, and this is gonna help give us that professional kind of sparkle on top. Now I'm gonna boost it more later, so we're not gonna go too crazy yet, but we're just starting to shape the tone of the mic, get that vocal nice and clear, make sure it doesn't sound like it's under a blanket. Let's listen for a couple other EQ moves to try out. Waiting on a Sunday afternoon so part of the character of this mic combined with, you know, the vocal performance and the notes of the song is we're getting a little bit of like a, a low kind of whistle kind of tone here in the 400 boxy area. I'll find it so you can hear it. That's it right there, 500. Waiting. And it comes back in a couple spots. I hear it again On here. A Sunday afternoon. So that is consistently poking out a little bit for me. So I'm gonna pull that back, maybe a couple dB, and let's hear what the difference sounds like. Waiting on a Sunday afternoon. Awesome. Now there is one other little harsh whistling frequency kind of in the more uh, kind of high mids area. So let's see if we can find that and maybe we'll treat that as on well. On a Sunday afternoon. For what I've read between the lines. I'm gonna listen and do a little scan. It's that one right there. Now it's nothing too crazy, so I won't go too crazy with it, but I wanna pull a little bit of that 3.8 out, 3.8 kilohertz, so right around there. Let's hear before these EQ moves. On a Sunday afternoon, for what I've read and after on a Sunday afternoon for what I've read between so very simple rolling off the lows brightening up a little bit of the top of the shelf treating just a couple EQ uh, moves on some frequencies that were poking out that's all I think this really needs at this point nothing too crazy we want to just add EQ and that's our step one before we go into step two which is Compression, we're gonna add a compressor. I like to use an 1176 style compressor as my main compressor and very, I'm not gonna get too complicated with it. To be honest, I have the same settings that I will use on 95% of vocals and it just works. So if you dial in these settings and you know, 
obviously listen to your vocal. You can you can tweak it as you need to. But this is going to get a good sound for you up and running right away. If you grab it, grab an 1176 style compressor. Every single DAW will have some version of one. So you can find out what that version is for you. Um, this is the CLA 76 from Waves. Doesn't have to be this one, but this one sounds great. And you're going to set the attack to the middle. We're not going fast. We're not going to grab... Uh, the attack time is how fast the compressor kicks in. So we're not going to grab the transients of the notes, meaning we're not going to grab the beginnings of consonants and the, the startings of the word. We want that to still cut through, but we're not going to be too slow either where our compressor just doesn't have enough time to kick in. So I find attack right in the middle on this one. Medium attack is great. And a faster release really helps give us kind of that modern compressed pop sound because that fast release of the uh, the gain reduction swinging back is what is what kind of makes it sound like a compressor is being a compressor. In this case, especially with this 1176. Ratio of four or eight tends to always work well. You can flip between them and choose which one works for you. And I like to dial in about minus seven, minus five to 10. If it goes a little over, a little under at times, not a big deal. You just want to aim for that general ballpark and dial in the compression. So I have these settings up and let's bring in our drive in our input until we're hitting minus around minus seven gain reduction waiting on a sunday afternoon for what i've read between the lines your lies waiting on a sunday afternoon for what i've read between the lines Awesome. So now I'm just going to flip between the 8 and 4 ratio and see what sounds best to me. Waiting on a Sunday afternoon for what I've read between the lines. Waiting on a Sunday afternoon for what I... Honestly, 4 sounds just fine. They both sound good. So just dial in the sounds make sure it's sounding good to you and then move on to the next step. So that's step two, compression. Now, probably you think we're moving pretty quick and you see a few other plugins here and you're, you might be saying that's not three steps. Well, actually my friend, it is because this next step doesn't actually count. I'm just using a gate and a gate is as just means I'm closing off. Uh, I'm, I'm turning down anything in between where I don't have uh, words coming in. And the reason why is because that compressor is adding, so it's it's thickening the vocal up. But where it's also thickening the vocal and making it sound more full and consistent, it's also thickening up this space in between the words. And in there is kind of where we have a little bit of room noise, which uh, you'll hear in a second here. So let's listen really carefully and see if maybe we hear some room noise. Let's look right there and see that. Nice. Did you hear that little bit of room noise? Let me turn it up for you. Okay, so all I'm doing is adding a gate. This is Arvox, um, and I'm just dialing, I just dialed in the only the gate here. I'm not even doing any compression. So check this out now. Lines, your lies. Okay, so did you see how it didn't grab the breath, but it just tuck down that little space in between where there might be a bit of noise. Now this is as easy as me manually editing this out. Okay. So that's why this doesn't count as a step. This is just advice to make sure you keep your vocals clean and keep an eye on them. Okay. Here is step number three, which really makes a big difference, but it's still not quite finished because we have a little bit of last little polish after that. You're really, that you're going to want to see with a free plugin that you're going to love. So step number three is something called saturation. In this case, we're using devil lock from sound toys, but really it doesn't to it doesn't really matter which plugin you choose because most saturation plugins will sound great for what we're doing. All we are doing with saturation is adding a little bit of crunch and a little bit of distortion, but we're not doing it where, you know, we're making a big distorted ACDC guitar or like a, a rock and roll vocal singing through a megaphone. That's not the idea. The idea with this distortion 
is we're doing it very subtly and it's just adding a little bit of extra character or flavor. Some people call this kind of an analog type of sound. And we're gonna add that in with a little bit of saturation and blend in the tiniest amount. And this little extra polish can sometimes be what makes the difference between a decent sounding kind of demo vocal mix and starting to really add that pro polish sound in because there's careful saturation added. Now I'm using Devilock and I've dialed in the settings to crush three, crunch three, and release time on fast. Now I'm not, I, I've just dialed in some settings. I might even push this to six. You can play around with it where it works for you. But basically what you wanna do is crunch and crush the vocal with some type of saturation or even a distortion plugin. Just make sure the distortion isn't like a crazy guitar distortion. Every DAW has some type of saturation. Now here's what that will sound like on uh, all the way on 10 and then we'll dial it all the way back so you can hear just that little magic touch. Waiting on a Sunday afternoon for what I've read between the lines. Okay, so obviously that's way too much, but this is letting you hear what we're blending in. So now we've got our EQ, step one. We got our compression, step two. Now we're adding that little bit of saturation and I'm gonna only dial in a little bit. So let's blend it in now using this mix knob. Waiting on a Sunday afternoon for what I've read between the lines. Your lies. Honestly, that sounds beautiful right there, 5%. I wouldn't add much more, might even back off the crunch a little, but just the tiniest little bit, 4 or 5%, and we're in really good shape. Let's bypass what we've done and then turn it all on so you can hear the progress so far. But you're going to want to stick around. Really cool free plugin I'm going to show you in a second, plus the final polish. Wait in on a Sunday afternoon for what I've read between the lines. Okay, and compression and EQ and a little bit of saturation. Wait in on a Sunday afternoon for what I've read between the lines. So I always ask myself, how can I make whatever I've done, how can I make it just a little bit better? And in this case, we're not adding an extra step because this was already one of the steps. We're gonna throw on some EQ and just have another look at a couple of those little problem spots. Whenever we add compression and a little bit of saturation to something, sometimes it, it adds some tone of its own and this can thicken out the vocal and bring out some frequencies that maybe before we had tried to control, but now it's bringing them back out. So I like to hit them one more time with an EQ after. Wait in. On a Sunday afternoon for what? I'm still kind of getting that like, like right there. Yeah, that. Afternoon for what I've read between. Yeah, we'll really clean that up quite a bit. And let's just have another listen. Wait in. On a Sunday afternoon for what I've... I'm hearing this whistle. It's like, it's up there. It's too high for me. So I know it's going to be up kind of in this 3, 4K area. That's it right there. 3.4. Wait. Sunday afternoon for what I... Okay, so let's bypass. Wait in. And turn it on. Wait in. Now that makes a difference. You really can hear it. One more time. Bypassed. Wait in. And on. Wait in. Awesome. Now here is a free plugin that you may or may not have heard of. Fresh Air. This thing on vocals is, it's just unbelievable how you can get a vocal to cut through. Be careful with it, don't add too much, but technically this counts as like an EQ and a little bit of saturation together. That's how they, they've designed it because it can add this really smooth, breathy top end on the vocal uh, with this mid air and high air. It's free, it's by Slate Digital. You might wanna check it out. And I'm gonna put in bypass. Wait in. And I'm gonna turn it on, you'll hear it brighten up. Wait in.
Do you hear that air on the vocal? I'll play around with these so you can hear it. Waiting on a Sunday afternoon for what? Right. Waiting on a Sunday afternoon for So this first knob is high mid information, meaning it's kind of around this general area that it's saturating and boosting. And then the high air right here is adding highs on top. I'm it's to me it sounds like it's around eight, ten, probably ten K and above, or even a little bit higher on that high knob. That doesn't matter. All that matters is it sounds good. So I like to add a little bit of fresh air, brighten up this vocal right at the end. But whenever we brighten something, what's going to happen? We're going to have S's and sibilants popping out. So that's where our de comes into play. Bring up any de -esser. This counts as one of our three steps under compression because we are compressing a frequency. Okay. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to find where the an S is in her example. On a Sunday after... That Sunday is the most SES that we could use for this. So that's perfect. And all we're going to do is uh, choose a frequency and find our frequency using the side chain. So we can hear where those S's are most annoying, <laughs> for lack of a better term. And then once we've found that frequency, we'll just reduce those S's a little bit with the threshold. Yeah, so it really does sound like it's in the 5.5K uh, range. If you're not sure where to look, secret hack, just head to the presets within your de -esser. It'll give you starting points for male S, female S, all sorts of stuff, okay? 5.5K sounds like uh, a good spot to hit that problem that problem frequency on the S. We're going to dial in th the threshold. On a Sunday after, on a Sunday after, on a Sunday after. So right there in the middle sounded perfect. Did you hear when I went a little too low and it almost sounds like he's lisping a bit because we're almost removing the S entirely? On a Sunday after. We don't want to dig that deep. On a Sunday after. We just want to take out the piercingness of it, the, the painful part of that S. We don't want that. On a Sunday after. So that feels, that feels pretty good right there. Now let's hear the vocals with no plugins and then we'll turn them on. Waiting on a Sunday afternoon for what I've read between the lines. Waiting on a Sunday afternoon for what I've read between the lines. Now your vocal is processed, and from here, all you need to do is add a little bit of reverb, maybe a little bit of delay to your liking, and because you stayed until the end, I want to give you a gift. If you didn't take notes on what we did today, not to worry, because the most common EQ and compression settings that I use for vocals, I put on our free home mixing cheat sheet. But it's not just for vocals, it's a chart with the most common go-to settings for also drums, guitars, bass, keys, strings, and even effects that tend to work well on each of those. So you can start transforming your songs right away with that cheat sheet. At the moment it's free, the link is in the description and I think you'll really enjoy it. So go grab that. And these have been the three steps that anyone can do, you especially, to get a great sounding vocal mix. My friend, thank you for spending some time with me today. And if you enjoyed the video, subscribe. And as always, happy mixing and see you next time.